With their latest iteration in the Note line, Samsung once again brings their flavor of Android to the masses, including the S Pen, and now a couple of new features like the Iris Scanner. But it does have to go up against what is considered one of the purest Android experiences here. It's Josh Vergara from Android Authority. What's going on, everybody? And this is your quick look at the Samsung Galaxy Note 7 going up against the Nexus 6P. The Samsung Galaxy Note 7 continues the glass and metal design that was permeated through most of the recent iterations of the Galaxy line, but there are some noticeable enhancements and refinements. The main ones come in the form of water resistance, which both the body and the S Pen benefit from, and that means that you can actually use the S Pen and write underwater, though we're not exactly sure why you would want to do so. The Note 7 also gets a curve on both the display and the glass backing, both of which come to meet the metal lip. Now, essentially what this means is that it feels just very pleasant in the hand. Other than that, however, most of the elements of the Note 7 are largely the same as before, including the S Pen, which is now 200 millimeters in length, but it's still as light as ever. And no, it does not go backwards into the slot, so it will no longer get stuck and break. On the other hand, quite literally, is the Nexus 6P, the Huawei made all metal device that brought a new design language to the Nexus line. Now, there's no denying that this feels very premium due to all of the metal, but there is a little bit of slippage that can be had, basically because of its sheer size. That said, the 6P's best design features include the dual front-facing stereo speakers and the placement of the fingerprint reader. Though it did take some time to get used to on the Nexus 6P, the USB-C port is now a part of the Note 7, so by now, people probably have some USB-C cords lying around. But even if that is not the case, an adapter will be made available in the box contents of the Note Note 7. Now both displays are 5.7 inches in size, but the curves of the Super AMOLED Quad HD display of the Note 7 help it feel a little bit more narrow. And also, like I said before, the curves allow it to feel more comfortable in the hand. On the other hand, the Nexus 6P with its AMOLED display does get an ambient display that does pulse from time to time when you pick up the phone, but it pales in comparison to an always on display that Samsung has been able to put into their Note 7. Performance does favor the newer phone, which is expected. The Note 7 gets the same processing package as the Galaxy S7 and S7 Edge, which can be the latest Exynos or the Snapdragon 820 depending on one's region. The Nexus 6P, despite rocking the Snapdragon 810, should still be able to keep up with all of its smooth transitions and its snappy performance due to the stock Android experience. There are still going to be all of those optimizations that you get with the latest updates to the Android build. Samsung finally made some choices that benefit power users by putting 64 gigabytes as the main onboard storage. There are no other versions of the Note 7 and the 64 gigabytes can be bolstered by micro SD card. Now, no such expandable storage options are available for the Nexus 6P, but if you put down some extra money, there are 64 gigabyte and 128 gigabyte versions of the phone over the base model of 32 gigabytes. And battery life should pretty much be similar between these two phones because the 3450 milliamp hour battery of the Nexus 6P is only 50 milliamp hours below that of the 3500 milliamp hour battery of the Note 7. Now, security was a pretty big deal for both of these phones as Nexus Imprint was a focus of this current generation of Nexus devices. Now, the fingerprint reader on the Note 7 is still very good. You just have to press the home button in order to open it up, but there's a new form of security on here and it's called the Iris Scanner. A dedicated camera next to the front-facing camera has an infrared light as well. In order to scan one's iris, only one can be registered into the phone, but once all of the elements are put into place and eyes are lined up with the HUD-like elements that come up on the screen, it actually unlocks the phone in kind of what feels like no time. A closer look at the scanner and a couple of security measures that were added to the Note 7 are available in a separate feature focus video. The Nexus 6P may have somewhat popularized the trend of less megapixels for larger megapixels with its package of a 12 megapixel camera at f2.0 aperture, making low light performance a priority. And then the Galaxy S7 came out with its 12 megapixel camera with dual pixel technology at f1.7 aperture in order to make autofocus a snap and also have good low light performance. The Note 7 gets this same camera package as the Galaxy S7, so its pictures should be pretty similar, making this a comparison that you can make if you want to look at Galaxy S7 photos compared to the Nexus 6P. 
So despite all of the differences and some of the similarities that both of these phones may have, the user experience of these phones will predicate on which Android experience you really want. The Note 7 has a myriad of features to boast, including all of the features that are included with the S Pen. The S Pen is not only a way for people to put down notes or to use the S Pen as a pointer or a kind of mouse in order to navigate around, but it's also an easy way of sharing with friends. There are a lot of different tools like ScreenWrite or the Notes application, which now gives every every single tool needed to create really nice looking notes. And there's also the Smart Select, which actually can now take a 15 second GIF and give that to you to share in a very easy way. There's also an easy way of taking down notes with the Screen Off Memo, but now the Screen Off Memo can also be pinned to the Always On Display, so you have that information pretty much constantly at the ready. We take a closer look at the S Pen and all of its new features in a separate feature focus video as well. And what might be on the very other end of the spectrum, the Nexus 6P is considered the pure Android experience. And really, the stock Android experience is something you would already expect. At its core, it's totally functional and easy to use, but from there, there's a whole different layer to the Nexus experience that has to do with updates. The Android iteration inside of Nexus devices can be updated with the latest version with all of the security updates that are involved, but there's yet another layer on top if you want to be at the bleeding edge of the software. Android N, for example, is on its way, and I've had it installed on the Nexus 6P for quite a while now. Being able to use the newest version of Android Android is actually quite sublime and Android N is pretty delightful so far. Now, while it's true that the Nexus 6P is undoubtedly the less expensive phone at $399 for the base model, you might also get what you pay for when considering the sheer feature sets. The Note 7 is stacked and every Note device has done really well to reflect that in their price points. So it really comes down to what kind of phone experience you want out of your phone, but in either case, you can pretty much say that you're getting the bleeding edge. On the one hand, you have the Samsung Galaxy Note 7 at the forefront of new features that include the S Pen and the Iris Scanner, but Android purists will likely already have the Nexus in mind when they want to try out the very latest that Google's OS has to offer. Stay tuned to Android Authority for even more about the Samsung Galaxy Note 7 and our comparisons with even more devices, more flagships, and our feature-focused videos delving into some of the new features that are available on Samsung's newest Note. Keep it tuned here for even more, and don't forget to go to our sibling sites as well if you want to go outside the world of Android, but then bring it on back here to AndroidAuthority.com because we are your source for all things Android.